I enjoy self-expression, so as an artist, can I call myself an artist? I mean, you're an artist, I'm an artist, we're all artists, so let's call ourselves artists, because as an artist, I have a passion for creating new creations, particularly those related to concrete. With that in mind, I decided to explore the world of high-end concrete do-it-yourself decor hacks, aiming to enhance not only my candle business, but also offer inspiration for others looking to elevate their concrete artistry. Let's create a collection of high-end ideas on a budget, and I mean on a budget like tight skinny jeans budget, that will elevate your concrete game to a whole new level, bringing a touch of modernity, creativity, and sophistication to your concrete works of art. Let's go. Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. Recently, my wife and I had a baby. No. <laughs> no. No, we didn't. Wait, I sorry, I thought it was 2009. Do that over. Recently, my wife and I had two of our four bathrooms remodeled. I mean, I don't mind bathing in the early 2000s, but the 1980s, not so much. So we had them redone. And when we refinished our bathrooms, my wife said she wanted a new soap dish for our new bathroom niche. That's when the light bulb went off and I ordered a soap dish silicone mold from AliExpress. Now, obviously there are various versions of soap dish silicone molds on Amazon, but I wanted something different from a far away land in China. No, actually I just ordered it because I had a credit from AliExpress and I didn't want my money tied up in a far away land in China. Once it arrived, I had to figure out how much concrete I needed for the project. Luckily, I have a formula <laughs> that will help me figure out how much product I need to use. Watch this video here if you need that formula. High-end concrete decor number one. So once I knew how much product I needed, I added cement oil to my mixing bowl and then added 3% of Glow Marble to my mixture. I love Glow Marble and I will talk a little bit about Glow Marble later on. Once I had my supper black pigment inside my mixing bowl, I mixed up my mixture so that the contents were evenly distributed throughout my mixing bowl. Then I added in my water and mixed that up. Once that was thoroughly mixed up, I added it to my soap dish silicone mold and let it do its thing. I wonder what kind of thing it was doing. After two hours, I demolded it and waited a couple of days to let it cure. It's not overly thick, so I didn't have to wait too long to let it cure. Then I decided to add some silver foil to my black soap dish to add a little bit more high-end appeal. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a high-end soap dish? I don't know. <laughs> Is that even such a thing, a high-end soap dish? We're gonna make it a thing. Anyway, normally I use glue to adhere my foil to my concrete creations, but this time, instead of glue, I used my Earth Safe Finishes sealant to seal and stick my foil at the same time. You know, kill two birds with one stone. Wait, why am I killing birds in this story? What other cliches could I use here? Oh, you can fill two needs with one D. Anyway, this is actually Earth Safe Finishes Quick Dip Sealer, but I won't need to quick dip it until the foil is sealed on. After sealing the foil on the soap dish and sealing the soap dish so no water gets inside the porous concrete, I waited two days to give it to my wife. And here is my awesome new soap dish. love my new soap dish. I think it's cute and I think it looks great in my bathroom. And my wife, she liked it too, but she did have a comment though. She always has a comment though, always. She said she wished the soap dish had a tray to catch the soapy water. And while I think she has a point, I haven't noticed any residual soap stuck to the soap dish or soapy water pooling underneath. So all in all, I think it's a win. And the best part, aside from the purchase of the silicone mold that I will use repeatedly, 
it only cost me a total of 80 cents to create. Woohoo! 80 cents! That's awesome! Let's move on. High end concrete decor number two. Before we get into the second high end decor do it yourself concrete item, I want to give a shout out to Globe Marble for generously sending me some Supra Black pigment for this video. I have been a fan of Globe Marble's pigments for over a year now and I love, love, love them because they always do their job and they always do it vibrantly well. One of the things I love about their pigments is that they can be used to add color to concrete, plaster, stucco, mortar, grout, cement mixes, and it even works on ceramic. These pigments are awesome, vibrant, and very cost effective for us concrete crafters. So if you're looking for some pigment for your concrete works of art, take a look at Globe Marble. You won't be disappointed. Links are in the description. Thanks, Globe Marble. My second high-end do-it-yourself hack is going to be a toilet paper holder. Really? Who's editing this shit? No pun intended, by the way. <laughs> Coincidentally, when I was searching for ideas, I came across Casa Refine's YouTube channel where Jorge, the awesome artist, recreated a high-end toilet paper holder. I love the idea, but I wanted something different because I wanted it to look really high-end or as high-end as the toilet paper holder to be. Really? I headed over to my local Dollar Tree store and picked up two items, a toilet bowl plunger and a small plastic container with a lid. Behind the scenes, I pre-calculated my mixture amounts and added that to a bowl. I knew I wanted to make a black base, so I added in some more supple black pigment from Globe Marble to my mixture and mixed that up. Then I added the appropriate amount of water and stirred that up thoroughly. Once I felt it was complete, I added it to my small container and then added the lid. Behind the scenes, I cut out a small hole in the center of my container lid so I could add the plunger stick to the container with the mixture. Then I balanced it, leveled it, and then I left to a far away place like China. No, wait, I mean, I left to let it dry. <laughs> After a few hours, I demolded my toilet paper holder, which came out pretty cool. However, for some, this might be just what they wanted, but I knew I wanted a higher end look and so I made some changes. That is when I applied some leftover stain to the plunger stick I had left over from when I got our hard war, our hard wor, our hardwood, our hardwood floors done when my wife and I moved into our house. After applying the stain, I waited for about 15 minutes, wiped off the extra and let it dry overnight. Then I decided to add gold acrylic paint to the tip of the toilet paper holder to give it a bit more of a high-end feel. Anyway, I taped off three inches and painted the tip gold. I added a second coat after it dried and then let it dry overnight. Then the following day, I sealed it with a polycrylic sealer I had left over from when I had my floors done. And once that was complete, I sealed my toilet paper holder base with some of the extra concrete sealant I had left over from the sealers I reviewed a few months ago. I was going to use earth safe finishes, but then I thought I don't want to waste earth safe finishes on a toilet paper holder. I mean, sealants are important for my concrete candle jars. And so I went into my sealer stash and used some Homax. Anyway, after I sealed it, I let that dry overnight and was pretty happy with the way it looked, but I wasn't 100% satisfied and that is when I had a genius idea. Well, I don't know if it's genius, it's not like I cured cancer. In any event, I had a leftover welcome mat that I had from the Dollar Tree store that I purchased last year. My thought was, why don't I cut out a round piece and add that to the base to cover up some of the rough looking spots that formed on the top of the base. You know how concrete can act sometimes. It wasn't a necessity because it will be covered with toilet paper, but like I said before, I want this to be different. So I cut out a circle, applied some glue to the base, and added the welcome mat piece to my base of my toilet paper holder. Then the last thing I did to finish this project off was to add rubber feet to protect my floor. And here is my high-end toilet paper holder. I really think 
this came out amazing. But to be fair, my wife didn't love the toilet paper holder. I mean, she liked it. But when I told her I had a gift for her, I think she was thinking something more sparkling diamond, designer handbag, or cruise ship related. Yeah, not high-end toilet paper holder. Really? Who keeps doing that? Actually, I'm probably doing it because I'm the editor. <laughs> the best part? This project only cost me, including what I bought from the Dollar Tree, $5.75 to make. Let's move on. High-end concrete decor number three. The last item we're going to make was inspired by Restoration Hardware's Vitali Marble and Brass Bowl Collection. I mean, these bowls are awesome, and I know we can make something pretty close to it for so much cheaper than $500 or $216 on sale or $172 if you're a member. To be fair, the Restoration Hardware bowls are made out of marble and the bowls I'm going to make will be made out of concrete with a marble design. But it's going to be awesome. At least I think it's going to be awesome. The first thing we need to do is figure out what set of bowls we need to purchase to recreate this set. And after doing a bit of research, someone told me about a set of Sterilite plastic bowls that we could use to do the trick. So I went on to Amazon and voila, a few hours later, Yes, a few hours later, my bowls arrived. I mean, Amazon is getting ridiculous. Don't get me wrong. I use them all the time, but soon they're going to be delivering something to my door before I even have the thought of ordering it. That's scary. Anyway, to create these bowls, the trick is to use two bowls at the same time to create your mold. All right, so the first thing I did was lubricate the inside of my large mixing bowl and the outside of my second largest mixing bowl. That way, when I go to demold it, it's super easy to do so. And keep in mind that behind the scenes, I calculated how much cementol, water, and supra black pigment I needed so I wouldn't waste any product by using this formula right here. <laughs> and in case you were wondering, I took 2,500 grams of cementol, added 75 grams of glow marble pigment, and 643 grams, or 25% of water, and mixed it together in a bucket with a drill and a concrete mixing bit. If you want to make your concrete creation life easier, get yourself a drill and a mixing bit. Anyway, after mixing it up thoroughly, I added my mixture to my large bowl. Notice how I have no waste at all. Exactly what I mixed up is exactly what I added to my bowl. In order to stabilize it as it'll want to push the smaller bowl back up, I'm going to add in some rocks to the bowl. Now that all my rocks are added, I now have to center it and level it as best as possible. Most of the time I do this by eye, but every so often I have to use a leveler and add some tape for extra stabilization. 24 hours later, I'm ready to demold my first of the three bowls. Notice how easy this bowl came out. If only the birth of my children were this easy. Am I right, ladies? Being that it's still curing and softer than it will be in a month from now, I'm going to wet sand the edges and the top to smoothen it out. I find wet sanding is always the better option as concrete loves water, which will help keep it from cracking as it dries and cures. And here is my large black concrete bowl. Just think we still have more to do. Let's move on to bowl number two, the medium sized bowl. In order to create the medium sized bowl, I need to thoroughly clean the second largest bowl as that was the bowl I added rocks for stabilization for the larger bowl. First thing I need to do is lubricate the inside of my second bowl and the outside of my third bowl, which will act as the rock filled stabilizer. Once complete, I'm going to add 2000 grams of cementol, which I calculated off screen, 60 grams of supra black pigment. And after mixing that together thoroughly, 515 grams of water. Then I'm going to mix that up thoroughly as well. I love using the drill to stir my mixture, but to make sure everything is off the sides of the bowl, I like to get in there with a mixing utensil just to make sure. Now that I feel it's all mixed up, I will add that to my bowl until there's no mixture left. 
Then I'll add rocks to the third bowl, center it and level it so it can dry. 24 hours later, I'm going to demold it. Again, notice how quickly it demolds. Once out, I will wet sand the edges and top to make it as smooth as possible. And here is bowl number two, my medium sized bowl. Not bad, but we have one more to do. For my smaller bowl, I'm going to clean up my bowl number three that I just used. And once clean, I will lubricate the inside of the bowl and then lubricate the outside of the bowl number four for my smallest plastic bowl. Then I'm going to add 1500 grams of cement all to my bucket along with 45 grams of supper black pigment. Stir that up nicely and then add 386 grams of water and mix that thoroughly. Once complete, I'm going to add that to my bowl and then add rocks to my smaller bowl for support and stabilization. Once I level it off and tape it a bit, I let it dry for 24 hours. 24 hours has passed and now it's time to demold my last bowl. Again, demolding with a little oil is easy. And after a little light sanding, I will let the three bowls cure for a week or so, weighing it periodically to see when the moisture dissipates so I won't run into any issues down the line. A week has passed and now it's time to add the marbleized effect to my bowls. For this effect, I'm going to use white acrylic paint and a couple of small tip tacklon brushes along with a skewer stick. To make the marble effect, I just have to dip my paintbrush into the acrylic paint, wipe off any excess and drag the tip from one end to the other. If I like the way it looks, I keep it. If I don't, I wash it off and repeat the process. The great thing about creating a marble look this way is that there is no real wrong way to do it. If you don't like it, you can always do it over, but if you like it, you like it. Yeah, baby, I like it like that. I like it like that. After spending about a half hour on all three bowls, I was pretty satisfied with the look. I didn't overthink it. I even added in a few splashes of white paint here and there to add to the look, but we're not done. Now, if you look at the original inspiration of the bowls, you will notice that there is a bronze line in the center of the rim of the bowl. Let's be real, that would be too tough for me to do by hand as those lines are machine made. So I decided to gold leaf the entire rim of each of the bowls instead to make my life a little easier. And by the way, in case you didn't know, gold is more high end than bronze. To add the gold leaf, I purchased Speedball, Mona Lisa, metal and gold leaf adhesive along with Gigulis gold leaf sheets. Hopefully I said that right, Gigulis. I will link the information in the description in case you want to purchase some as well. Okay, let's be honest. Not that I've lied to you before, but let me be more honest than I have been since I started this YouTube channel. Before you go off and purchase these items and do this yourself, I must admit applying gold leaf is pretty tricky. The gold leaf sheets are very, very thin and super tough to control. So you have to have a little patience and a sense of humor because it's not as easy as it might look. And the first thing I'll do is paint on the glue to the rim of the bowl and then add in the gold foil. And keep in mind when it sticks, it sticks. The good thing is I found that it got easier as I went along and any remaining foil that fell off was easily applied with dabbing my finger into the foil and then placing that onto the rim. And luckily the glue was strong enough to remove the foil from my finger and stick it to the section I was trying to foil. After gold leafing all three bowls, I let them dry overnight so I could finally seal them. Okay, there are many sealants in the market and people ask me all the time, which sealer is my favorite? For the most part, the answer to that question is Earth Safe Finishes Quick Dip Sealer. Links in the description. It's eco friendly, food safe, pet safe, people safe, and there are no VOCs. You can watch the video of my application process here and check that out, see how you like it. And because I am not sure if these bowls would be used as a fruit bowl, planter, home decor, frisbee, fish tank, or whatever, I'm going to make sure it's sealed with a product 
I know is safe to use just in case. Now, normally I would dip my concrete creation into the sealer, but these are large bowls. And so I'm going to use a paintbrush to liberally brush the sealer on. I will first seal the inside and let that dry. I will then add a second coat for added protection and then I'll let that dry. Flip it over and repeat the process for the outside. Now, to be honest again, I don't know what this honesty thing is. I did run into an issue that I fixed off screen. When I flipped my bowl over to seal the outside, the sealer magically pooled underneath the bowl and globbed on top of the parts of the rim where the gold foil is. Duh. I should have seen that coming. How did I fix it? I scraped off the excess sealer, reapplied some glue and foil, and resealed that section, and that was it. I mean, I had to do it. If I were to do it again, and by the way, I will when I make the white bowls next, yeah, I would seal the outside minus the bottom, then immediately flip it over and seal the inside. After it's dry, I would then seal the bottom. Anyway, let's have a look at the three bowls. I truly love how they came out. And to be totally honest, God, there's a lot of honesty today. I think they look better than the restoration hardware bowls. Maybe I'm biased, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And the best part is this project cost me a total of dun, 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 $20.75, or better said, 7.5% the cost of the sale price plus tax and shipping of the restoration hardware bowl. 7.5%. Now, what did my wife think? One, two, three. Oh, these are nice. These are very nice. All right, tell the truth. Heavy. They're heavy. They have density. But they're nice. I like this. They look good. They look good. Woo! Man, she's a tough woman. And she's hard to please, but you know what? I love her. And take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're going to help you on your concrete and candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.